Is it finna start? Yo, here we go, man. It's your boy Eric, aka Young God, coming to you in this orange dungeon, man. Getting into your real raw rugged and like the Breakfast Club, say, man. We got a got a special guest in the building, but I'm gonna let the boy introduce himself, man. Who we got? Yo, man, this this is Kent from Overdose, Kent James. Hey, man. Hey. We got Kent James over here, man, and um, shout out to the boy, man. We got a shout out to Kent James one time because not only this this overdose has one of my favorite mixtapes of this decade. It's just it's so much. We are gonna get into that later, man. We are gonna get into you first. We ain't even gonna talk about overdose. Right? We gonna talk about you specifically, man. Cause for the people that don't know who Kent James is, just tell them a little bit more about yourself. Man, I, I'm I'm really short spoken, man. Um, I I don't really like doing this type of thing a lot. But uh, as we had a funny story, I'm going to let him share that with y'all maybe afterward, I guess. I don't know of why I even did it. Uh, I just, you know, I, I keep to I keep to myself a, a lot. I'm just, you know, just keep to myself, man. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know how to introduce myself other than, you know, being a part of the group and with the boys. But just, you know, separating myself from that, I, I'm really uh, to myself. <laughs> See, I guess the story he wanted me to say, uh, I was emailing him for the interview or whatnot. And usually, I mean, I get all type of responses from, uh, you going to pay me? I'm like, no, I'm not going to pay you, buddy. Uh, I get all type of crazy responses. This is the, probably the best response. He ain't, he ain't say nothing. He ain't say nothing like, do you want to pay me or whatever? And they say, are you black? Now, I ain't know if he was on some like... I love the white man type stuff. I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I don't know. I often mess around and be like, yeah, my name's Connor. But he said, nah, man. I said, yeah, I'm black. And he said he gave it to me over some like, you know, when have you ever got something just because you're black? Just basically on some black privilege type stuff. So out of that, hey, man, respect Kent James. My respect level done already went up for him. So thank you for that off top, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Thank no you. No problem, man. man. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. But uh, for the people that don't know Kent James, I mean, Kent, yeah, Kent James, uh, just like off the simple fact, who, what do you do outside of music for the people like, you know, because we don't really see y'all like that on what y'all do. So like, what do you do outside of music? Like, what are things that your hobbies, like TV, I don't, is anything? What is some stuff that you enjoy outside? Um, I, I'm an Avenger extraordinaire. I, I love to binge uh, movies. I love to binge um, information. Uh, I'm a history junkie, uh, whether it has to do with, you know, when did the government put crack in the hood? When did they take the the jobs out? Or just looking at how Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones stole black music. Um, different shit. You know, Mao Zedong in China, it's just how, you know, you know, one person made young people, about 10 million young people, kill all their teachers and parents and stuff because they wanted to usher in a new way of, of thinking. That's what I do uh, in my spare time. A lot of coffee. I'm a father. Um, I have a daughter who I, I teach that Santa Claus isn't real. There's no such thing as dinosaurs. Um, I, I write for Gambino. I'm always in the studio with Nipsey Hussle. Um, I, I started a, a company with my father and a business partner, um, you know, Muslim, just like myself, I'm Muslim. Uh, we started a, a business to where we get uh, people free health insurance who make low income. Uh, which is t less than twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars a year. Uh, we do credit rebuilding for those people. Uh, we'll do their taxes for them. Uh, but that's what I do outside of overdose. <laughs> now you just said a lot of stuff in that little little one thing from from a lot of Black History talk to the 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 dinosaurs thing that just really piqued my interest to talking just talking about a lot of stuff. So let me see where I want to go first. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about something a little bit more simple. Dinosaurs, I guess. Uh, so why don't you think dinosaurs are real? Because I've heard that before, but I've, I've really never, I'm like big conspiracy guy, but that's not a conspiracy I've really got into. So can you please enlighten me? It's, it, this is the thing, man. When it comes just to not even trying to be spooky about it, just, um, I don't believe anything that's not a hundred percent true. Mm -hmm. So just because if you Google anything about dinosaurs, there was never a whole dinosaur has never been found. The most is about 20 to 30 percent of the bone structure that means literally everything else is somebody making it up now if you want to profit off of something that is good like a good idea that's one thing but to say that they existed and that none of them exist anymore because of a comet falling but every other entity that was here before then still stayed i mean you just gotta you know it's common sense you know santa claus cannot come and i have i, I live in a section eight apartment who the fuck is Santa Claus, nigga? <laughs> yeah. 
So that's, that's what I'm saying, man. Uh, it's done with that. And I don't want for my daughter to be like, have any like L's on me, man. If it's about me being a person, being a human, it, she's going to learn that I'm not perfect, but I'm not necessarily going to lie to you. I'm never going to outright lie to you. And that's one thing that I was taught as well. And that's what was instilled in me. And with that alone, that is the type of respect that I have for my parents. I will never disrespect my parents because of the relationship that we had of them trusting me and loving me enough to not lie to me. And that seems so little to people, even to you as, as an adult, like, oh yeah, but that was just so, but so what? Like, what if they did not You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like around that time you would have been able to, and then me as a child, I'm looking at these people believe in this fat person that does not come down their thing. And then the people that love them the most, like literally work to the to the to the end of the hours and nights till you don't even see it. They the real fucking shit. And it's fucking Jesus' birthday, supposedly. So it's like, you know, fuck Santa Claus. If I could kill him I would. Yeah, it's gonna definitely be like a little kid that stumbled upon this and be like, Santa Claus is real <laughs> Well I, mean, I wanna make shirts. So I'm gonna make a shirt for my daughter that says uh Kent James killed Santa Claus. And I want to make kids shirts that say that. So hey, man. they can put it on me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got the Santa Claus dinosaur thing. Another thing that attracted me was, I guess I'm going to go straight to it, the black, like you're talking about uh, basically how Mick Jagger or whatever stole uh, rock. And uh, probably since I was like in 10th grade, that's when I really got into like just a lot of black power type stuff. And um, it's just like when you when you watch it, like when you watch certain things, like you ever seen Hidden Colors? Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's in my DVD player right now. It's in, it's in DVD okay, so I actually interviewed uh the guy who makes those, uh, Tariq Nasheed, and um yeah, I interviewed him, and um I don't agree with everything he says, but I don't think that's yeah, the friends that do. I want to be able to say one day, like I want for my mom to call me and be like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm smoking right now with Denzel Washington and Tariq Nasheed." Call me back. <laughs> hey, that's 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 some life goals right there, and I don't know. I just think that's uh I think that's cool that that's artists out there. That uh, I kind of you know just awake to certain truths out there, and I'm kind of glad to hear you know somebody like you saying that you know you're aware of certain things that's going on or have went on in our history. So uh, I mean, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was born into that type of stuff, man. Um, you know, my dad, uh, my dad has always taught me that that type of thing, and my mom as as well. My dad is a Muslim minister under uh, Minister Farrakhan. Okay. And my mom and my mom is um been an AP English teacher forever so whether it was speaking correctly or being able to talk like a nigga <laughs> or being able to, to know different facts that 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 um, give me not necessarily see now this is another thing too that I'm starting to hear a lot of young people or people my age say is black power talk it's funny that it's not I'm not speaking no black power sh nothing I'm just giving facts mm -hmm. but it's so powerful that you immediately identify it with black power. And that's so good. black history. I'm just, no, I'm just all, well, all due respect, black history is black power. Mm -hmm. Black money, though, is even better. <laughs> that's a fact. And so that's why, and knowing that, that's why I even, you know, going back to the beginning of why I even did the interview is because Are You This? It's about floating power. And that's what I've been on. Um, I've always been on it, but from touring with the boys, um, and then coming out on stage and most of my lyrics have the word nigga in it and not seeing niggas in the front row saying nigga kind of fucked with me. Mm. And so I made it a point of, damn, it's bigger than me. It's not just about making songs, you know, about smoking weed and, and having sex and all that shit. Like that literally is like not even 2% of it. Yeah. See, that's, that's interesting. I kind of want to go back to uh the whole getting an interview being black thing because i feel like i've never been interviewed before but i look at certain interviews with like i say like future getting interviewed by like some white guy and it's not like a I'm not saying like a nerd word but it's just like some like nerdy white guy and i don't know i just feel like it's sometimes weird because it's sometimes you're such you're such outside of the culture and it's just like i don't know have you ever been interviewed like by a white person you're just like this is like i can't feel this you know what i'm saying like you just by black people and I do that too. It's, it's not. That's the thing. When I like, I'm not trying to turn it to a race. Yeah. Part. No, no, no. I, I know you're not, but I'm trying to show. Like, it, it's not necessary because I've been interviewed by white people, Asian people, and, and they have great things to speak about. It's what's the culture. 
that's that's what we got to really focus on and who made us niggas and bitches mm. and, and what are we how much codeine can you do and, and what other artists used to shoot dope opiates like that's what that's how Gil Scott here on night here that's why Miles Davis is not fucking here Marvin Gaye was fucking strung out his pop shot him cause he was strung out on opiates mm. which was them shooting dope which is just like Sip and Lean but I've been there too I've been strung out on Lean on pills I've been there so I, I'm not passing judgment but it's all a fucking cycle and it just so happens to affect people that look like us a little bit more can you talk about physically, you? physically scientifically and literally just like spiritually it affects us just more and it's and that's their culture that's the culture you feel me yeah it's warfare type in a, in a way I mean and that's the, the fact you say that warfare they use what we had against us because rap and hip hop used to just be no recording. You know that used to be like a rule. Ain't no recording this. You just gotta come to the function where the DJ gonna be there and you gotta listen to the nigga rap. The first rap song was literally bitten from them going to parties. Like yeah. it, it's like if we were to do Lauren London at a party, only at the party. That's the only time you could come hear it is if you came to our party at the end of the week. And then all of a sudden you hear on the radio somebody saying your song because duh they come to the party for a month now they know like that. So once we start letting other people in and allowing our race to go market it off, that's when the shit went downhill. That's, it's interesting to say all this. I mean, this has kind of this it's, this doesn't this doesn't directly correlate what you're saying, but I just haven't had a I I haven't had a chance to put this thought out. To the internet and i just kind of want to see what you think about this so you're talking about uh this whole situation and you ever you've seen first 48 before right you've you've seen first 48 before right yeah so i'm looking at first 48 and a uh, cop gets killed right and five hours later they're like it's on the news they're like such a sad thing such a sad thing and everybody's saying like how he was such a good cop and uh they're just saying like they hope they find this bad murder this and that and I was just watching it, and it just tripped me out because I'm like, when you see like a cop kill somebody, it's almost like, let's say like, even though George Zimmerman wasn't a cop, but let's say George Zimmerman killed Trayvon, they go and try to make the suspect, I mean, they try to make the victim look like the suspect, like they start digging stuff out, and oh, he had goals on Facebook. I'm like, yeah, what I got to do with him being dead? You know, they don't got nothing to do with that spe specific situation. So how do you feel, do you, th do you think it's an actual thing that more black people get targeted in the media uh, you know, it's like being bad people when they're the dead ones. You think that's an actual thing? Um, I think black people are a science project of white people. Mm. Not black people. I'll say niggas. Niggas are a science project. Yeah. As I said, who made us niggas and bitches? Who told you it was okay to tell your girlfriend she a bitch or that's my bitch? Who who said that was? Who said that? Like, who did you? Who else did you hear doing that? When you were stripped from a land, or your name, your culture, your everything. Okay, after that was done, who did you learn to smoke weed? Who taught you how to smoke weed? Not your uncle. Before that, before that, and before that, who'd you see smoking a pipe? Who'd you see getting drunk and shit? Like beating on their wives and shit, mm. and then coming and raping your your moms and your sisters and shit. Who did you saw? Who did you see doing? Who made we a science project? And then you have to start being literal, because the public always becomes smarter. But one thing you have to notice, whether it's Egypt, whether it's Rome, like all these dynasties came are in ruins, nigga. It's easily, and as much as we know a lot about them, we don't know shit about them because they will be gone in a second. Whether it be a bunch of people just killing each other outright, being savages or devils, like you kind of mentioned, mm -hmm. or it, shit, you never know, dog. You got some Hurricane Irma shit cracking off right now, so at the drop of a dime, you can be gone just because. I'm actually in the, the path. I'm in Florida, so I, 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 I can relate to that, so... See what you're saying. But niggas and bitches are uh, white people's science project. 
and that was boiling over right into their front lawn because your your children want to be a nigga and a bitch. It don't matter. You can be from the Philippines, nigga. I just saw a rich ass fucking Dubai kid with fucking like Jordans and and some fucking jeans on. Like who the fuck wear J's and jeans, nigga? Niggas. Facts. That's a fact. But Michael Jordan is just one of the niggas who they let have some bread and it's just a he's still motherfucking niggas. Like we still have a science project. At the end of the day, niggas will get chipped over your shoes. And it'll just be cool. You'll give some money, and then it'll just keep rolling. But you're not going to the hood, though. You're not going to go, and you're not going to deal with it. Mm. But that's that's just like slavery. It's just all... It's... Motherfuckers is scared, bro. We scared. You ever thought about, like... You ever thought about, like, starting, like, a podcast? Or starting just, like, a, something just to, like, express your ideas and talk to people? Yeah, I thought about it, but I don't got enough security. You know? I don't, I don't carry no guns and shit. So, like, what I say is literally, like counteractive of what is going on in the world mm. and that's dangerous like not on some shit like, I'm not trying to be spooky or no shit but like if I went on on a podcast saying everything that I'm saying there's I was put like this the biggest KKK following is in California mm. <laughs> I, see what you're saying. I know that type of shit you know what I'm saying yeah. but I'd rather just do an interview about it and stack up my bread so that I can't get a podcast and get some better security. I get you saying because I mean somebody like somebody like Farrakhan, he got the whole you know what I'm saying everybody in the in the bow ties. No, 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 nobody, it's not going to that level. I'm not afraid. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, you're right. And, and my dad moves like that, so I got an army behind me. Okay. It's not nothing like I'm afraid of. Okay. I'm I'm wise though. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. if it's fire outside, I don't gotta be scared of the fire, but you don't walk through the motherfucking fire. Yeah, facts, 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 facts. Like, yeah, yeah, facts. I gotta be. I'm, I'm just wise with it, so I'm telling you how I'm feeling. So I don't give a fuck if somebody hears it, mm-hmm. but for me to to broadcast that message um, annually is warfare. Okay. Yeah. Like like. Period. So- you could, not trying to sound like a revolutionary, mm-hmm. and I'm not trying to sound like no, like no Tupac or no war general, but all of this shit is that. Like, what are you talking about, nigga? That's why it's a fucking liquor store on that down the street on my on the corner of my street that way, and the, a liquor store that way. Mm. It's not like that in other people's neighborhood, meaning other ethnicities, uh, neighborhoods. Come on, bro. Yeah. You no know, real shit like come on like yeah. so if i work against that if i work against people you know what i'm saying if i build a no liquor store just a store that's called no liquor store like <laughs> that's counterproductive yeah. ain't nobody about to what they need to come for me they're gonna shut that down at all costs even if it's successful even if it's like fresh foods or something there yeah I agree. they're gonna shut it down I agree. So before I make those types of moves, like a chance the rapper is giving back money to school and all that shit, you gotta have something that protects that idea behind it. Mm. And right now, in 2017, that's capital, and that's an army. You gotta have the money, and you gotta have a. If you fuck with me, this is gonna happen to you too. That's what you gotta have. Okay. I don't know what niggas thought. Hey, man. And that's why niggas get shot down in the street. That's why niggas are being used as puppets in the music because it ain't no, okay, I'm going to put my own music out and if y'all motherfuckers try to steal my shit, this is going to happen to y'all. And niggas, autom- see, we automatically thinking physical too. And it don't necessarily have to be physical. It could be, no, nobody signed no motherfucking record deal. Everybody signed a Jay-Z label or something. Or if no motherfuckers going to drink, like Jay-Z said, like everybody buy some rock. Support black business. But we don't like, but niggas don't like niggas. So that's not. That's not a thing. Yeah. Or hate niggas. Niggas don't like each other, but black people who don't think that they niggas hate niggas. So what's the difference between you and a white person? I'm enlightened, man. I'm enlightened tonight, man. Not for white people, but for the most part. You're trying to be white. Some of, some of us are trying to be white. That's a fact. That's a fact. Oh, yeah. But no, we're trying to get on, get out the hood, and not fuck with niggas. That's white folk all day. All day in America. Mm-hmm. 
and we comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of athletes ain't taking that knee with Colin Kaepernick like they did when it was with Jim Brown back in the day, though. Everybody took a knee. I don't know. Everybody, Muhammad Ali, I mean, mm. stood, with Jim, stood with him. I'm just saying, like, that's a, that's the culture. That's the culture we talking about. It's the culture is to not take a knee with Kaepernick. The culture is to keep doing dope when all your heroes did dope. The culture is to call people a bitch and you got four daughters by four different women. Yeah. That's the culture. Let's keep it real. The culture is to be able to put your hands or touch on a, a girl, and if you let it die down, motherfuckers gonna forget about it, and you still making bread. That's the culture. Who making that shit cool though? That's all I'm saying. I actually want to just add on one more thing to when you was talking about the, uh, the athletes thing. I was with a football player. I was supposed to interview. We we taped his workout. I mean, he cool. He listen to rap music. He, oh man, nigga, shut your ass up. We all, we all having fun. We get into the camera. I'm like, all right, it's gonna be a great interview. I said, uh, yeah, man, we got, we got him right here. I was like, introduce yourself. He's like, hello, everybody. My name is blah blah blah. I'm like, eh, what, you, what you talking all like? Though? You was just like chilling, talking like us, not you. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? So when you say like people trying to get out the hood and act a certain way, that's a thing because they see it on TV. Oh, I gotta be like this. It's a stereotypical mode and. No, no, look, but look, bro, I do it too. Mm-hmm. So I'm never placing judgment on people. You got to catch yourself. Like, I don't talk the same way as I'm talking to you when, I t- when I'm with my white friend. Facts, facts, facts. That's a fact. It's almost a natural thing. It's it's unnatural. Mm. Fuck that. Why? It's unnatural. Why? Because we aren't comfortable with ourselves, and sometimes we don't even realize it. A white person ain't, t- like, saying what's up, nigga, to you. Like, ain't no Asian trying to sound more black. But white people got the world, Asian people got Chinatown, shit. You know what I'm saying? We don't identify with nothing. Black people in America are like trying to adopt a teenage child. It's a little bit harder than when, like getting a baby newborn. Mm-hmm. They, you can choose if to tell them if they have parents or not, or that you're their biological parents. But if I'm a teenager, like I know what's up. Like I had a mom and dad. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's like black people, we know what's up. Like, our ancestors were slaves. Mm-hmm. As we look back, that's what it's going to be. That's what we were taught. We ain't really shit. You ain't got to even say that. How about that? I have a two and a half year old daughter. Mm-hmm. I read that at four year old, four years of age, she's going to know what black is, what white is, what Mexican is, what Asian is, and where they fall at in America's. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, mm-hmm. in America, view Asians is this. People in. You know how dangerous that is? Mm-hmm. It's subconscious shit, too. Remember this? We were watching, uh, remember Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Yeah. Out of nowhere, how did, why did Aunt Viv turn lighter? Light yeah. <laughs> I always thought about that. That specific, I always thought about that. It's pretty deep, bro. It is, it is. And you ask, what do niggas do? What they do? You talk about it for about a couple of episodes, then you get the Forget fuck over it, because mm-hmm. you're just a nigga, and you want to be, you don't, you don't care, you want to be accepted anyway. You try to get to where I'm at anyway, and you'll and you'll do dumb shit like buy chains or buy a fucking Range Rover to to take up for the lack for the lack of knowledge that you don't have about yourself, or the lack of confidence that you don't have in your people, and the lack of love you have for your people. It's like I don't know gay shit. Like niggas don't love each other, man. You don't like give your your boy a one up. It's I I don't post my homeboy shit as much as I'm supposed to, but I'm identifying with that in me, and I'm f- figuring out ways to to do make that you know mm-hmm. more of a, a um create more of a platform for them to be able to do that. Mm. I feel like I don't know. I feel like like the way I'm talking to you right now, I get the same feeling like when I'm watching like a Vince Staples interview. Y'all ever met before? Um, I met Vince a couple of times. We got the same lawyer. I, we stay. Uh, he stays not too far from where I'm at right now. So, mm. yeah, I'm in con- He stayed at, like a Long Beach. Yeah, so. y'all got a little, little same feeling when yeah. I watch when I talk to y'all. That's cool. But um, actually, to seamlessly go right into this, because another thing you said when you were giving a description of yourself, you said that you wrote for Gambino or you write for Gambino, and I'm not gonna lie, I was never a Gambino fan whatsoever. But this last album, Waking My Love crazy and he's talking a lot of black stuff like we talk right now so you saying that you write for him or you wrote for him is this like have you like have you put some ideas in his head or something or like you know 
that's I think that's that'll be for y'all interview. I honestly know that uh, Gambino and I have had extensive conversations about this type of thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, now, as far as I, um, the album per se, what what that album came out, um, I don't. I wouldn't say that. Yo, he, he got that idea of making that type of album for me. For me, but we have definitely had those type of conversations. Um, nearly ninety nine percent of our conversations are about what we talk about. Mm. That's what I'll say. Okay. Well, how did? You... Yeah, we have a lot in common. So, about, how did y'all come across each other? Like, how y'all meet? Well, my best friend, um, Kiana, from... This is, like, the first friend I ever made in life, damn near. <laughs> but, um, well, at least in L.A., she she connected me with his manager. His manager was a fan of us. And I, I just pulled up to his house, and I just wrote, wrote a song called Shadows with him. And we just kept going back, kept going back over there uh, for about a, about a couple of months. And then he, he started shooting that FX show and he just, you know, a lot of shit to start going on, but he always kept in contact. Um, I live in Atlanta as well, so I remember seeing him out there when I was recording my album. Um, and yeah, we just, we, we, just, we were speaking a lot. I, I also ended up recording or playing him a record that I was going to use for my own album. And it's it was a tribute to, this was before, you ever see that movie, A Beast of No Nation? No, I haven't. It's on Netflix. It stars Idris Alba. It's about like this warlord type of deal in uh, Africa. It's a Netflix show, but it's about basically like an old warlord type of deal of in Liberia. So I, I made a song prior to that, even seeing that movie, and prior to that movie even coming out, I did a song ba- based off of a documentary that I saw about uh, just Liberia and the warlords that they have, and I, it just kind of messed with me in a way because they really only show. I love Viceland, but you got to be careful with Viceland because they're still white people telling black people history Fact. or white people black people's story. And I just don't fuck with that. I don't give a fuck how clean it is. I just don't care. Now, like Tyler having his own show and you ever seen Decent like, Mero? Act- hmm? You ever seen Decent Mero? They got a little Viceland show. It's like two black dudes. They just be talking. It's like a little light show they be having. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That like stuff like that mm-hmm. is okay. <clears throat> Who am I to say it's not? Yeah. But this is just my personal opinion when it comes to like, there's a show called Last Chance High, where it's about like, um, you know, um, you know, misfortune um, children in Chicago. That's a very touchy subject. I don't feel like that should be documented by white people. Mm. I don't care. And if you if somebody asks me why, I just tell them because I don't think so. Give me a chance to document. Um, Thomas Jefferson and how many black people uh, women he raped yeah. and I, I tremble because I know that God is just and justice cannot go unslept don't be scared about it meaning he's talking about slaves knowing that ju- one day they're gonna wake up so I, I don't think that like let me document that then let's just start documenting everybody on shit but that's not gonna crack um, so yeah <laughs> but again you know Talked about this type of shit. I gave him the record, so it's like you know we'll have that type. Of record. And I like the way. Hey, hey, let me let me do this. He, the white devils, man. The Yakubians. Now back to Gabino. You know he's a great guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and then and then I get out of Caldwell Flynn. You know, white even white folk the devil because like I said, it's niggas that want to be white. So in a way, the devil is anything that is not natural. Mm. It's not of of. Of a natural upbringing, yeah. You have a stray cat. Your grandma would say that old devil cat. Mm-hmm. For real, for real. Just literally speaking, you got deviled eggs. Like it's different yeah. eggs, it's like naturally made eggs. The motherfucker like took them. Like so, like even when we were saying that it, within the nation of Islam, when we were calling and Muhammad Ali's and Elijah Muhammad's were saying and Mr. Farhan that the white man's the devil. You have to say it like that to niggas for them to really wake up and get it. That's a fact. You know, though they have, you know, you know, certain motherfuckers leave blood everywhere they go. I mean, goddamn. That's a fact. I'm gonna have to shout out you also because I like you also calmly said this. 
like this is actually going to happen if it did that'd be crazy you said uh i was actually about gambino you said uh i'll wait till you i'll wait for you to interview him like i, I mean that's exactly why i phrased it like mm. that you know what i'm saying like i don't it's not spooky man uh like i said i don't it's probably the, the first interview i've done by myself ever mm. so that that goes to show you uh and I don't fuck with no, I don't fuck with really nobody. I'm sitting here with two niggas right now. I've been knowing this niggas since he was 14. I've been knowing him since he was four. Hey man, so, I, I'm, I'm glad you put that in the atmosphere for that to happen, man. You know what I'm saying? So thank you oh, for man, that, man. already there, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, man, let's get into your music real quick. Or let's get into, because uh, this, this is what made me want to do this interview. So I review albums. That's what I do. And somebody commented, uh, Eric, review Overdose Boom. I think you'll like it. And I said, I already heard it. It's a classic to me. Then I go back and listen to it. It's like a month ago. And I'm like, yo, this album is still good. And it came out like 2013, right? Yeah, Boom came out in 13. Now, I just want to ask, why do you think the album is not like... I I think the album should be like, you know, like... I, I, like up there I don't do do you understand why it's not because I don't uh, in the music industry the less that you need from the music industry the less recognition that you're gonna get um, the more of a fan of music that you are or a fan of entertainers that you are and not artists uh, the less you get from it at least while you're alive, or at least while you expect to get it. I think that also we listen to a lot of nerd, we listen to a lot of outcasts, and the way that that type of music intrigued me was, when I was young, I always liked it because it was different. But then when I got older and heard what they were saying, it was even more timeless and relevant. And I think that was a lot to do with the production, a lot to do with the videos. And so with Overdose, it's kind of like we took the same path without taking it. Like, people asking for Outkast albums all day. And I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? People mm-hmm. asking for albums all day. So the fact that they asking for an Al- I mean, a, a Overdose album, it's, that, it's so funny to me. Because it's like, we, we are the split image of the people who we started making music for. Mm-hmm. We started making music because Outkast wasn't making music. We started making music because Nerd said, it's the last one, like, we're not making it. So we started. And that's what it was. It was us filling a void for the music that we looked up to and heard all the time. The Slum Villages and the Dillas and shit that we used to listen to. And all the way to the Dog Pounds, Parliament. Motherfuckers listening to everything, dog. So, yeah, I, I think um, it, it's going to go unnoticed. I think that everything that, we're, that we do, whether it be the boys or even I do, it's going to go unnoticed for at least a, a decade because it's timeless. Mm. And it so maybe ahead of his time but I'm okay with that because I look younger than I'm supposed to look one and two I don't necessarily give a fuck as much as other artists do about they shit I give a fuck about what people think more than I give a fuck about the product and that's my downfall for me personally mm. and the boys know that though like I give a fuck about um, what people think about us as a collective as, as I do about them thinking if you know, we're going to come out with another uh, record. Mm. I'd rather just listen to the same shit over and over and, and tweak the littlest shit on the sounds uh, so that people can't judge us on that as opposed to the shit that they going to judge us, the personal shit. It, it's literally always about the music when it comes to, to me. Like, I'm a studio fucking rat, man. Studio rat. I've been recording. The Overdose album has been done for about two years now uh and i've been recording my album for about three so Mm. and i don't even plan on releasing that for probably another year like i was ready to get ready to start and i'm just it's not not, i'm not about to do it (laughs) well if you don't mind i just would love to talk about a couple songs on boom and just get like your opinion on how they came about or whatever if that's cool all right, so uh, let me see. Uh, start these niggas. I, I that really attracted me because actually, 
um the last what like fourth of it that's you singing on it right the my whole bullets in my magazine watch it bang now bro for the longest since 2013 i don't know what you're saying on the first word you saying my whole my ha- my whole bullet what are you saying that's what i've been trying to figure out for the longest i'm saying model bullets model bullets oh. in my magazine so models as in girls mm-hmm. represent them as being bullets and in a magazine is a clip, but mm-hmm. it's also models are also in magazine. Double time, so double time. Model bullets in my magazine. Watch me, bang, bang, bang. Fire. Uh, then what else we got? Uh, I mean, you just like you did come, You came through as a singer, like you was singing on, like you went and, like auto tune harmonizing. You and that bit. Uh, let me live in that new, 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 you slide on it, man, so that song is hard, it's just, everything is so good on here, the way you took control of when I woke up, it's crazy, man, that's crazy, yeah. man, like, you really, like, on some R&B that, that, junk, some, that was pain, though, that was all blue shit, like, that's literally waking up in the morning, um, fucking on some, a new girl, like, one night stand type shit, just to get over another chick, and you still fucking think about her like damn like i still woke up thinking about this chick so like a lot of my music comes like dog i don't know <laughs> it comes like in the heat of life like, i told you i literally wrote that on somebody's doorstep watching the sun come up and i just fucked her like i'm just trying to get over this other girl but i'm still thinking about this chick and i'm about to write a song about her and i'm mad at her so that's why i'm like that's your hoe that's my hoe too Two. <laughs> I'm still, but I'm talking about this motherfucker. Fire, man. What do you say? Uh, you just moved to LA. I smashed in 02. It's crazy, <laughs> man. Sorry. Uh, man, baby steps, bro. I don't know why you had to do it like that, man. You came in. Like, I'm not, and by the way, I'm not trying to. Everybody in Overdose does their. Th- falsetto, man. falsetto before. Hmm? No, right after. That was Falsetto right after Dream, but right before Gambino. So make sure you remember that. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, man, it was crazy, man. Baby steps, man. You came in on some Erica Badu junk, man. That that we said we should be friends. Nobody's ever gave me that comparison, and I was like, I appreciate you for that one right there. Exactly who it reminded me of. I appreciate you a, a, a million times for that. Um, Erica Badu, like that shit, really gave me goosebumps. I've actually met her before. We did a show with her. Uh, Man, she changed shoes like three times. She had some LeBron, so I was glad she changed out of the LeBron. And then she had so much sage in the backstage. It was like, what, is it me? Like, is my energy bad type shit? Mm-hmm. But then, like, to watch her come out on stage with some tea and, like, perform on her fucking, uh, what you call it, the NPC. Mm-hmm. Just, I've been really, um, her, her album, A New America, like, damn near saved my life. Like in 2000, it came out. Um, oh, this is a girl FaceTime me now. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, I th- I'm still a nigga. My bad, man. I'm trying to, like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we understand, man. We understand. But, um, fucking, um, so, yeah, man. Uh, but, but, but the falsetto uh, comparison to. Like Erica Badu is a, like a fucking amazing. Um, I did that, and you know, literally because I listened to a bunch of Bilal. I don't know if you know who yeah, Bilal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course, of course. I was just trying to be on my Bilal meets Ron Isley type shit, but like in my own way. But like I, I, I did hear some Erica Badu in it once I recorded it. So like to hear you say that it was like, God, oh, that's. I'm listening to the song and like, cause I like I said I re-listened it cause I haven't heard it in probably like two years. And the way you so smoothly came in, I'm like, who this nigga think he is, man? This, it was hard, man. It was just so hard, man. So the Erica Badu, that was the first thing that came to my mind because the way Iman Omari produced it, I'm like, I could hear uh, Erica Badu easily over this. So yeah, man, that really gave me hurt, man. And he's a fucking wizard, dog. Like all these niggas, he's, and that, that's another thing. Um, my product, like the producers that we work with. Uh, God. Another thing, like they literally, like I would have to say, like as opposed to the boys being in a group. I've been having a bad boy. My bad. Good. But uh, <laughs> nah, it's just uh, yeah, man. 
you know, great, great ass comparison. Like, I, I, I thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a fire, man. Um, and then last one I want to touch on that you really, uh, I think, shined on was Lois Lane. That was that was my favorite song for like five. That, I, I mean, I was playing that. That you're the winner, my Lois Lane, fire, man. I always wonder who is the female on that. Uh, that's the same female. I don't know if you've heard our other records, uh, the uh, Live for Die for album. Have you ever heard that? No, nah, I haven't, man. I, I, cause after Boom, I didn't even know y'all put out stuff after that. To be, I'm gonna keep it real. You know what I'm saying? So, so I need, I need to hear it though. So I'm gonna text you the link. That was before Boom. Oh. Um, right. Now with that record, I, I remember telling the boys before we recorded it, like this. That's that's the record that. I'll just send it to you. Okay. I, I don't know if you've seen any of the videos to that or nothing, but that's. If you, once you get that, then you really get to understand that, like. You heard starting from Boom is so amazing, and this is a part of the reason why we called it Group Overdose. Because once you listen to the music and start digging more for all the other ones, you're just not going to get enough type stuff. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's not that much music for people to do that to. But it's like that on every aspect, whether it's you interviewing us or whether it's you um, chilling with us, coming to a show, or seeing a video, or the music. But I'm telling you, once you hear that album, it's, it's a little bit different. Boom was more of a we got money now, and motherfuckers are are mad because we you know are getting going through it with females. That well for me it was. Mm-hmm. So that's why I did more singing and more me talking about the actual little like shit I was going through in a relationship. So saying that I'll I'll be way out of your lowest lane uh, came easy type of shit like that comparison shit came easy. And the girl singing on it was on a couple of those records that we did um, in the beginning, which was Hot Before You Go On. And there's another one with Casey Bedney's mm. uh, called Want to Know Your Name that she's singing on. And then there's Lois Lane. So get this. My producer met her randomly. Her father is the lead singer to the Beach Boys. Wow. So it's, it's just, I forget her name, though, bro. But shout out the homegirl. She has okay. super blue eyes. Like, damn, I forget her name. Okay. You remember in the year? Mm-hmm. I'm here with this thing. Cream, Cream forgot her name too. We trying to. I, I, I forgot it though, bro. Okay. Well, but if it pop up, you let me dope. know. She's dope. Yeah. Nah, like I said, her pops is in the Beach Boys. So there you go. Like, Surfing USA. You all right with me? <laughs> okay. They, they used to steal from niggas though. So I got to tell her, like, your pops used to steal from niggas. We need some bread. My whole thing with all of that is, I'm not tripping. Just like, I got a PayPal account. Like, on behalf of all the black artists, I'll take some bread. Hey, man, that's the realest thing I ever heard, man. I like that, man. Need a, need a go... F- need- the broken <laughs> shit you heard. <laughs> 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 real nigga so. Um, Hey, man, Uh, let's go straight into the fan questions and we'll be out of here, man. Uh, let's go straight. All right, let me see. We got uh, Americana. He says, what's your favorite beer? Ah, uh, man, see, this is thing now i don't drink hard liquor i haven't had a hard liquor drink in four years hmm. so beer is pretty much the only thing i drink for the most part other than champagne and wine uh but my favorite beer would have to be corona corona line man i'm from i'm, I'm, I'm in la so just keep it simple any mexican beer okay. but we're gonna we're gonna stick with corona okay uh lockstar says even though you kind of address this a little bit he said, uh, Ken said he was dropping three solo albums this year. Ask him about that. Yeah, uh, that was too much caffeine. <laughs> that day, I, I had a lot of caffeine, and I, I had a lot of money uh, deposited into my account. Um, legal money and money from helping a lot of black folk. Okay. So I was feeling it. Um yeah, that, 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 that was caffeine and, and a and a and a quick deposit. Okay. Too much of it. Okay. So no more three albums are coming out. Tell them I have I have about seventy records though, so we're just gonna see what happens. Okay. Uh let's see what else we got. The one. He says, um Ask him how is it uh Kanye to the I'll send you the link to the thing okay. when we're done. Uh the one says how is it working with ASAP, and would he ever do it again? 
uh, working with ASAP was was very fun. I remember recording uh, my verse to the Pain record that we did on his first album, and he went in and redid a whole nother verse, like made us leave. It came out with a whole nother verse, so mm-hmm. of course I'll do it with him again. Okay, like, we can go back and forth. That's my God. He signed to the same label, so you know, it's inevitable. It's almost. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, he also asked. I missed this. He said, "Who's uh, who's your favorite artist?" Me. <laughs> Ken James, Ken James, Ken James. Okay. Uh, let me see. The life of Jai Paul asks, are you separating from Overdose? What is the status of the legal situation? And have you been writing for others? Um, I'm not separated from Overdose. Stay out of my business. Like, literally, you got to start staying out of motherfuckers' business. Um, and what's happening with Overdose is the album's coming out. We just shot a video. Um, we have the release date for the album. Um, it, it's just politics, dog. Like, honestly, mm. it, it's really a political thing. Um, you know, being in the situation with the label, it, it, it was something that we had to do financially. Um, and so now, now, now it's just you know you, you see what, what what goes with that. Whether it's samples taking years to clear. Or, or just you know, shortcomings. It's okay. a lot of stuff that happened within our label as well um, that we didn't have no control of. But there are you know situations that we, we should be able to take advantage of just so, on our own. But we honestly, I don't think that we did shit for the bread. That's what really came down to it. Like we did it for the, to survive in money, but we wasn't doing it signing a, a record label to get a chain. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Like niggas just wanted a little bit of babe and to be able to pay their mama bills. Like, okay. so not once that ran, mm-hmm. yeah. Once you know, once that goes out of the window, um, you know, it's back. It's it's. I don't know. It's just it's just, just go out the window. We we just waiting on, um, you know, the label to put it out on the day that they said they're gonna put it out. But our our job is done for it. Just I mean, waiting I don't on know them. What now. Niggas Okay. Uh, as far as me, yeah, I'm, it, it's always been waiting on them, you know. If it were the streets, then I think niggas would have for sure had homies go up there or something and just deal with it in another way. Okay. So it's not something that we don't care about, but we can't do that. Yeah. We're going to do it the legal way, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, getting legal money now. Not necessarily the legal way. we just going to do it the fuck y'all then. You got what you got way. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's another so, way to do and, it. And that's sorry to the fans, but... Mm-hmm. Go up there with some burners or something. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, two more questions. Uh, Americana, I forgot this question. He said, "Uh, I guess you could answer which one is uh more powerful." He said, "What event in his personal life inspired him to start making music, or what happened in your personal life that had the greatest effect on your music once you already started? So, greatest effect bef- uh, to make you start." Or greatest effect after you started? Which one ever was more powerful answer? That's what he said. I don't know, man. I don't know what made me um, start doing music. I don't know. Um, I saw somebody else doing it, and it made me mad. Like, I saw somebody else that I knew doing music, and it made me mad. Because it's like, fuck, I always wanted to do that shit, and I'm fucking better. I know I can do that shit better. So that's what made me start. Okay. Um, and then what's had the greatest effect on my music is Los Angeles women, or not women, girls from Los Angeles who didn't have the best relationship with their fathers. That's affected my music the most. Hey, man. Like you just told, what, what song you said? It was when I woke up, right? When you was just singing right after you were trying to get, get over a female, right? Not necessarily say, okay, look, not get over a female. I was trying to fuck a female out of my brain, so that's not necessarily the same thing. Is it? Is it? I, 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 need, clear, I need clarification on that one. I never heard of you. What's the difference? Yeah, I'm just not trying to think about you right now. Mm. I'm not trying to, like, think about you all the time type shit. It's no bad blood. Just right now at the moment. Just, yeah, just right now, like, why the fuck am I thinking about you? I get you. If I, I just you. fuck some other shit to not think about you and I'm still... I don't know what that's called. But <laughs> I, I get you. I get you. It makes for good songs. I just use it as it a muse. Bro. You're right. Last question. Uh, I actually got asked this on FaceTime by a friend. Uh, Young Nato. He said, big fan, but I have to ask, 
Who's your favorite porn star? Whoa, niggas is getting very deep. A guy asked this? Yes, a nigga asked this. No, I'm not fucking answering that question, bro. It's all out. It's so many, like, red flags off of me, bro. So I have a favorite porn star, but I'm never telling another man that, bro. Like, <laughs> not, not all no question shit. Like, we got to be smoking. Like, I, I'm, I don't know when that's cool, bro. Tell him that's not cool, bro. Tell him to <laughs> lay... Tell him to go have sex with a real girl, bro. <laughs> I got you. Oh, um, wrong porn, though. You know, power to you. Do what you want to do, but don't ask nobody else that question. Shout out to the homeboy. Yeah, 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 y'all know, yeah, yeah, Nate. Yeah, hey. you gotta check him too, man. Like, bro, you know what I'm saying? You kind of put me on the spot. <laughs> like, uh, any anything you want to say before we get out of here, man? I think it's been a great interview. What you what you want to say before we get out of here? Um, shit, man. I don't know. Dog. You should sell bonnets, bro. Facts, bro. That's a fact. Facts. You should fucking sell bonnets, bro. Like you did the whole interview with a bonnet. Like, that's fucking fact. I definitely Fisher. should start doing that. Bro. Start doing that. That's a bonnet. Oh, I'm showing the homies. Yeah, bonnet. What's up? <laughs> official, official bonnet. All state 2013 shirt on lock. Hey man, I'm gonna have to man. I'm gonna fuck with. It. How like raw the whole setup is, yeah. Thank you. Hey, you're the first person to do all that, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. I pay attention to the details, dude. You know, fuck it. You got the money Mayweather shade, fresh goat tea. <laughs> Get it in, dude. Stay <sighs> black, bro. Facts, man. That's really Facts. it, though, man. Like that's really it. I, I fuck with you um, for the types of questions you ask, man. And that's that's pretty much it. It wasn't. I, I, you know, I do talk too much sometimes. So oh, you good, you good. You good. Not, I was waiting for the homies to come. They got, they came with the medicine. Okay. And so that's pretty much it, man. I'm about to watch uh, Narcos. All right, man. Well, let me close this out, man. Until next time, y'all already know. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate.